This is Tommy Watt for TCT Boxing and IFL TV. I'm joined by 12 Gauge Ireland, who's just picked up a surprise win against Haytham Lemuse. How you doing, mate? Oh, man, I'm fantastic, living the dream. So uh, it looks like a, well, emotions were high, so winning the Aussie title, obviously very important to yourself. Mate, I've been boxing for 10 years now, amateur and professional, and that's been the dream since I started. And tonight, to do it in front of my countrymen on St. Patrick's Day, in front of my family and my friends, and to everything we've been through in my trainer, you know, we've had a real rough last 10 weeks and, you know, to pull it all out with a hat feels fantastic, mate. Couldn't, couldn't ask for anything more. And, uh, yeah, it was a uh, great fight for the fans, all action um, from beginning to end. Oh, mate. We, how, um, yeah, how did it feel while you are in there? Do you feel like you are in control? Um, look, I, I, I honestly don't have words to describe what it's like to fight. Um, I sort of zone out. I can't remember you know, anything, not because I took hard hits or anything, just because... I believe if you think too much in there, then it takes too long for you to react. I believe if you're relaxed and you're just fighting on pure instinct, then things will just happen. You know, I, there's a couple of times there where key words come out where like you rocked him, jump on him, and you see little things where you think, all right, let's pick it up, let's do this, let's make it hurt. But, um, you know, it's not one step, one round of time. You know, it's never for a second everything you're not in it because it takes one punch to win a fight. Absolutely, and uh, so he did actually land a few big shots on, uh, on Haytham. You knocked his gum shield a, a couple of times. Did you feel there was potential there to maybe step on the gas or was it more mate, make sure you keep keep ready for the 10 rounds? We we knew that he was going to be super fast, super tough. Um, you know, I wasn't, we weren't really 100% sure about his power and tonight we sort of confirmed that it was pretty average. I don't think he's much of a puncher. Very skilled boxer, very good mover, got great combinations, but you know, mate, I've, I've never met anyone yet that I feel is stronger or more relentless than myself and I'm very good at breaking people down in the deep water and when they said 10 rounds, that's my cup of tea. <laughs> and um, so you mentioned it's been a, yeah, a tough camp for yourself. I mean, for say people at home who won't know about that, what, um, what's been going on behind the scenes prior to this fight? Mate, probably about four weeks ago, our gym burnt down from arson, um, which was a massive upset for us. Uh, you know, my coach personally, his family, um, you know, we're a very tight community. You know, when he hurts, I hurt. When I hurt, he hurts. And, you know, it's a mixture of feelings when your home goes away you wake up in the morning, you, you don't know where to go, but I run and I go to the gym and then you run and then I sit at home yeah. <laughs> and you wait and um, you know, we've had a lot of people pull together and make things work for the short term and you know, for everyone to pull together and just to put it on the pass and not worry about it, you know, we've got a huge fundraiser coming up on April 8th um, at Dorset Gardens, uh, so if anyone feels like coming down and come and see some famous sporting people and chip in and helping out, that'd be fantastic. April the 8th. April the 8th. Um, but, you know, tough camp. 10 rounds isn't easy. It's not for everyone. There's very few fighters I think there are in Australia that fight 10 rounds anymore. You know, it's very hard to find a long distance fight, especially with competitive opponents. You know, Hayden's yeah. from Malta. Yeah. He's not from Australia. He flies in, flies out, flies in, flies out. Um, you know, that's the calibre of fights I want. I never turn pro to fight tomato cans from Thailand and get this big O record. You know, my record's not pretty. I've been to Vegas, I lost to now a WBC Youth World Champion, Randy Marino. That was a fantastic learning curve for me. I was undefeated at the time, thought I was invincible. People would be wrong. <laughs> and you know, and, and it taught me more than if I won a fight. It taught me that there is so much more to learn, so much to do, and you know, sometimes just having the bigger balls, if I'm going to say that, isn't, yeah, so gonna, like. isn't gonna really win the fight for you. You know, you've gotta have a game plan, you've gotta to listen to your corner, you've gotta have a, a strategy, and you've gotta to stick to it. When the going gets tough, you've got to stick it out, and it's hard for some people to do that. And you know, even when you think you're going to break, you've got to have someone with the backbone to say, "No, this is what we're doing. I don't care if it's not working now; it will work later." And you know, tonight we stuck to the game plan and we, and we made it work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and so obviously we've said with that tragic news so happening in the camp, I imagine that makes this victory all the sweeter to uh, to pick up the Australian title. Mate, it makes it fantastic. You know. Um, just to everyone, you know, everyone, so many people have been behind us for this. Um, the Irish, you know, people at home, Queensland, it's Wales, Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, we have a lot of friends and family from all over the country who've really gone behind us. And to say that two and a half, three years ago, I was a nobody in North Queensland um, means the world to me, you know. I was an amateur, I didn't have a great record. I had a couple of nationals, didn't do anything special, never represented overseas in kind of games or anything like that. But, um, you know, now I'm here, three belts later, making waves. And now you're the Australian champion, so what, um, what's next for yourself? You want, you want to defend that belt and uh, fight the best in Australia? Is that what's next? Mate, I would, I would love to defend the belt, as my trainer just said. We'll talk about it. Um, I would love to defend it or fight something better. But, um, 
I just, I don't really care about the belts, but obviously it's fantastic. But I want to know that when I finally give this sport away one day, that win, lose, or draw, I fought the best. And that people know that Gage Island was a tough boxer and my name is etched in stone forever. You know, tonight, that's, that's forever. Well, absolutely. I think you um, certainly put on a show and, and made a statement tonight, so anyone that saw that would definitely be keen to see you back out in action. Um, there's another bon uh, Johnny Lewis boxing series on in May. Maybe we'll uh, see you back then. Uh, yeah. But until then, wish you all the best for your fundraise April 8th in Dorset Gardens. And uh, enjoy your celebration. Enjoy the rest of Patrick's Day. Well, mate, thank you very much. Not the Irish. <laughs> all right, cheers, Gage. Thank cheers, you. Mate.